Superman playing a summer girl. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright. And you're listening to The Krypton Report. And you're listening to Krypton Report. things kryptonian podcast including superman and supergirl we discuss games movies cartoons tv shows and comics. find us on facebook instagram youtube and twitter so this episode is actually episode 159 and we'll actually drop before 158 just because of timing schedules and what was planned we had this opportunity so no confusion welcome to the krypton report and we are here to discuss Immortal Combat. I feel like I should yell that. Like, Immortal Combat! <laughs> um, yeah. I was going to say, you're going to have to cut in the, the Mortal Kombat music right there. <laughs> um, and we want to do it quick and soon because it's a big deal. And I want to throw this out there. Like, this is going to be spoiler, but this episode ends with a to be continued. That we probably won't see until about a year from now. Or very close to it. At the earliest, March. Late March. I would say, yeah, you're, I mean, we're looking at, you know, probably not January. At least February or March. Well, it said mid-season. And if you think about even with the breaks, usually mid-season is January. So, like, that's always when Legends premieres because it's a mid-season But that's show. when everything's premiering as it is. <laughs> exactly. So you shift all that down and you think January, October, February, November, uh, March, oh, December. So, right. I wonder what the series order is going to be next year. How many episodes? Uh, Phil actually um, just sent me a, a posting. It's going to be full full seasons. Oh, wow. That's yeah. So they're either not going to do too many episodes. Maybe they'll maybe they'll bring it on right after like the Oscars and the Super Bowl and we pretty much get it straight through. Well, wouldn't that be amazing to get no breaks and watch Supergirl be. straight for 20 weeks? Well, it's also interesting because <laughs> I don't know, you got, we were watching live tonight. Uh shows like The 100 are just premiering now. So CW starting to start n- newer programming farther into the year in summer. You know, because they well, always... CW still has like a lot of like a lot of um, networks. They have year-round programming, but summer months it usually cuts down a lot. CW actually has expanded their programming all year long. Um, exactly, they have shows debuting and running through the summer. Exactly. I mean, technically, Star Girl premieres, and that's going to be like a, a kind of a show but we're not here to talk about all that we're here to talk about immortal combat and yes that is the voice of james the superman of red and brian the batman from down the road is here too i think do we lose he was a second ago do we lose brian brian did we lose you he's muted not sure i've been talking and i don't know if you guys are hearing me at all now we do no no I hadn't been. Welcome, Brian. Okay. Oh, hey, guys. What's up? Immortal Kombat! <laughs> I, I picked Scorpion if we had to pick somebody, but... so let's... Just real quick, I watched that, that movie, and wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say at this moment on this podcast. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I will get there. So, here we go. Lex is evil. Go figure. What? What? No way. He is evil. Clutch my yes, pearls. Lex said. Um, <laughs> we don't really Immortal have, combat. We don't really have a synopsis for this episode because it just aired and we are... We are talking about it with, within 10 minutes <laughs> of it ending. So, okay. So, we'll kind of jump around a little bit. So last week's episode, we didn't touch on this too much, that they make a suggestion that Alex should be a vigilante, and then in this week's episode, she has a full-on costume. Right. 
She is. Is she what is, is she? Is she Nightwing? Is she Huntress? Is she Black Widow but blue? Blue Widow? But see, she's what, already what been, she's already been Black Widow with her DEO black suit she had. And Jania goes, Absolutely. she looks like Huntress. I said, she looks like Nightwing. I'm like, all right. But Jania. It is kind of Jania had the best comment. She goes, her makeup. She goes, her eye makeup's a little too much. It looks like she's wearing drag makeup. <laughs> I was going to say, the costume looked cool. But yeah, when they focused in on her face, I was like, whew. I'm like, this, like, isn't, this isn't Oliver and some grease. They, they spray painted that on her face. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that when she turns the costume on, the costume gives her that makeup. Like it's totally meant to be. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> so we learn that there are multiple agents of Leviathan. Uh yeah, two there. other elementals that we haven't seen the entire season just show up out of nowhere. And I'm gonna throw this out there real fast. Number one, James, I'm still holding on to your theory because I feel like the premiere of the next season is going to tie up the loose ends from this. And I, cause I, I really think that a, your theory may come to fruition and B, I think Cryer's got like maybe one episode left in him. Um, cause I, well, don't, the, I don't um... see him getting dragged into a full another se- season of Supergirl while a Superman show goes on. I feel like right. people would, that would be too irritating. So I don't, I think he'll end up in jail or something by the end of the next episode. Well, you know, I had my theory about um, um, Sean Astin's character being that. Now, they're gods, you know. They're, like, they are could... They, are they... I she thought could they were be... aliens. Okay? Because, like, <sighs> the way they talked and introduced them is I thought they were ancient, like, aliens that came here. That basically that was call themselves they, gods, because now, yeah, because you know what I'm saying because now, and I hate that. I hate that in any show where characters are like, I am a god. No, you're just because if if they're gonna pull that card, then Supergirl's a god. Super. Well, a when god. you, yeah, um, well, at at one point, um, in in past stories, uh, the Titans, um, uh, the Titans of Greek mythology, they were. In DC Comics, at one point, they were aliens. They're still like, they're still perceived as immortal gods, and they are basically immortal. Same thing as Ramakan and the other elementals here, mm-hmm. but they're they're aliens. They're immortal. So, I mean, are they gods or are aren't they with their immortality? Well, are they omnipotent or is, are they just immortal? Just well, we could be getting. The start of this whole old gods, new gods thing. As much as and I would say could... yes, I doubt they have the balls to go there because I thought for yeah. sure that Eve Tessmacher last season was talking to Granny Goodness on that bench, and then she says Leviathan. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. And I was like, uh, Leviathan, I don't know much about that because I haven't been binge reading the New 52 like you guys. It's nothing. Um, it's, it's literally nothing. It's just a meme. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, um, yeah. This, but, this Leviathan has absolutely nothing to do with that Leviathan. And I really hate Or any movie. Leviathan yeah, I past. I hate that they I use the name so. Leviathan. Um, I mean, as I, was, as I found out they were gods, I was like, Okay, so maybe we're maybe we're like introducing this whole God concept because we're gonna lead into Dark Side, you know, in a new crossover in the future, um, you know, something like that. Um, I mean, I thought the whole God concept was pretty weird, and I'm and I'm very interested in to see where it's gonna go, especially with that cliffhanger. Um, I mean, just along those lines, I always wanted to see Supergirl versus the Granny Goodness and the Furies, mm. not necessarily the whole Dark Side thing like i don't think i think i think that's too big for just supergirl alone but definitely her versus granny goodness and the furies that could make compelling stories for sign me up for part of an arc well i think yeah like i think granny coming to recruit supergirl trying to make her the captain of her furies would be amazing Mm mm-hmm but who would you get to play Granny Goodness? Uh, I don't know. We've had a good Granny has to be someone 
that creeps you out but somehow draws you to her. Like, if we're talking TV or movie. Because, like, who I would cast for the film series is different than who I would cast for TV. We're TV. talking about Supergirl, man. We're talking about Supergirl. Honestly. We're talking about TV. Well, she's done TV before, but she's done a lot of main. I think Kathy Bates would be amazing as Granny Goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> like, I just, I, I just think she has uh, the, everything you would want for a Granny Goodness. Um, because there's she can but play can the CW afford her. <laughs> I don't know. They have the hero of of Mortal Earth, you know, the unsung hero on their series. So eh, he's been in he's been in two episodes as a cameo. That's how much they could afford because he saved <laughs> Mortal Earth, man. Um, um, so yeah, back to that. I unless unless she is, you know, uh, um, it a god maybe a shapeshifter or something maybe sean astin isn't the the head but also i do i i was we did talk about that last last episode when on the missing link but i afterwards i had thought like you know what i think they had said she beforehand and they definitely confirmed it in this episode where yeah they were said they reported to a she yeah because lex says it to Gamane. And can we just say, like, in this episode, Gamane looked like she was cosplaying Mira. Like her outfit like she was about to go swimming in Atlantis. She was she was cosplaying Mira and then she became the cyborg. Swimming in the who's uh, <laughs> She she was cosplaying Mira and then and then she became the um the robot chick from uh Superman, Superman 3. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> or like the Terminatrix. Wow. Yeah, Terminatrix. with the hair at the end, yeah. Yeah, I, I looked at Janine and I was like, she looks like she's low-grade trying to cosplay as Mira. And she looks like, yeah, I can see it. Well, yeah, I mean, she was wearing the green. It was almost scaly. And then, of course, she had, like, that push-up bra and, and freaking all of her cleavage showing. Like, yeah, that's Mira if I ever seen it. And she, yeah, because we just watched Aquaman, like, the other day. <laughs> so, like, the, the costume and everything. Um, I did like the beginning, how this episode picked up right where the last one stopped, where you have Kara and Lena talking, and Lena ha they have a great scene of, like, Lena apologizing and just trying to talk with Kara, and she's not ready for it, which then gets... Uh, Coupled with a scene later where Kara and Lena have a great talk and Kara talks about, yeah, I lied to protect you about this one thing. Um, and then how much did you lie at me uh, and the things that you did over and over to me to hurt me? Yeah, that was really good at the at the start. It was Supergirl was like, I don't want to talk about the past. You're here. We're going to talk about stopping Lex Luthor and what he's going to do now. And then and then she eventually goes into what you said there, the past. Like she had and, and it was written really well. You yes, know, um, all these these people are on my team. They're in danger because they know me because they know uh, who I am. I lied to you to protect you, you know, and I understand that I hurt you. But after that, you did everything you could to hurt me in every possible way. And, and, then it, and then it resolved itself there at the end when she said that she could accept her apology and they could move forward. Which is great. So it was, a good, it was a good step throughout the three different parts. I love it of them getting a chance to work together. Got the kryptonite suit back with Supergirl's heads up display. <laughs> yeah. I do want to give a shout out to uh, David Harewood, who directed this episode. Mm hmm. Uh, he did a great job. <laughs> like, I've uh, just recently I've been watching this shows where, like, last week's was Melissa. Um, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, yeah. Deus Lex Machina. That that one about Lex's post crisis with time, 
Brian watched and loved. Yes, he did. Yeah, I, I mean, it was it was an it was an episode that I I didn't even think about. <laughs> you know, um, I, I caught up really quick tonight. Um, I didn't even think about that time. Uh, you know, of how Lex made himself a hero. Um, but I'm, I'm glad we got to see it. You know, Cryer's Cryer's Lex is just. I mean, Kara said it in one of the episodes, <laughs> these past episodes. Uh, he's he's a devil incarnate, <laughs> and and uh, I I just I just love his motives. I, mo- motives. I love Cryer's Lex, um, and the whole time I'm watching these past couple episodes, I'm like, where the heck is Superman? Like, if Lex is like, if if Lex is this great, and and posing as this. Messiah, if you will. Where the heck is Clark in these episodes? Right. That's what. That's kind of what killed me during this whole thing. Um, you know, we get gods, we get gods on Earth. We got this Leviathan thing. Um, you know, where the heck is Clark? And that's you know that's one of the biggest problems. Once you introduce him, and they're working, and then you bring in so much of his world, you have to find a way to write him out. And, I mean, they did that well when they had him go off to live on Argo for a while. So I was like, oh, okay. right. you know, right. that, that worked. But then the, he went through crisis. He knows what happened. And the mm-hmm. last time we saw him, he was flying home when he heard about his sons. Now, maybe some of the events well, of Superman and Lois will coincide with this timeline. But I, I sure doubt hope so. it because it just makes well, me- well, get, you know. Uh, Lex is, is in National City with his sister and his family. Like, Lex isn't the only villain that Superman is going it has to go after. So, I mean, yeah, Superman yeah. could quite quite easily be, yeah, you know, yeah. dealing with 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 Brainiac or Parasite or I mean, y- you name the list of villains that Superman could be dealing with while Lex is is doing his thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's the beauty of Lex is Lex works, Lex works behind the scenes, you know, for the most part, manipulating people. And even Superman, as much as he, as much as he knows and, and, um, believes that Lex is doing bad. It's not until Lex actually shows his hand. Does he, does he catch him? Yeah. I, I, I agree uh, with you. I, I, mean, I honestly uh, agree uh, with you. It's just one of those things that this is his arch enemy, and his arch enemy is now being right. praised as a good person. And we saw how just um, Kara reacted, much less being Superman, who had the sun turn red against him and had to imprison him and all that. Um, and And we don't even get any, like... You know, I'm an uncle. I mean, I don't have any kids of my own. But, like, if if I hear that I have another nephew, you know, another nephew or another niece, you know, I go and see that other niece, you know. Like, they knew, I mean, we find out at the end of Crisis that Clark has two kids. He has two boys. And somewhere in the midst of this, I Kara would have heard that, or Kara would have heard that. And been like, hey, I want to see what this other kid's about. There's no reference to that. Uh, that that was a problem for me. And well, you know, by the time Crisis shows up, I mean, she had one nephew, and he was born off-world, and he was an infant at the time. So, I mean, it's kind of the second cousin, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, second, second I just cousin. I said that, nephew, huh? Or did he? Yeah. <laughs> Cousin, nephew, nephew's brother's former roommate. <laughs> um, what does that make us? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, but I, but I thought, I thought that we would. Uh, I, I think I screwed you up because I said nephew too, and it really would be your cousin. But, um, but I thought in the Lex episode that I, we would get some hints of what's going on with Superman, like what Lex has done with Superman in the midst of this 90 days. But we didn't get that, and that kind of sucked. Um, but what I what I will praise about this episode and, and this story arc is the emotional weight that they put in with, with the Obsidian technology and with the VR. 
Um, yeah, that was strong. That was good this episode. Oh man, like I mean that that old lady they had. She's like, I'm I'm hearing my husband again, you know, and I'm getting to see him again after losing him. And that kid about losing his mom, you know, what what emotional weight, man. <laughs> like, right. Well, even like, you go back to Alex in Wonderland and everybody, well, at least some of the people, a couple of people that she was running into, um, they were there um, to, to, like, forget stuff or to cope with stuff. Right. And it's just, it's just so powerful, like... Like, I mean, and, and I think the Supergirl, Supergirl needs to get some dang credit for that, man. I mean, it would be hard it would be hard for me to say to somebody, you know, hey, I know you're happy now, and I know, you know, you're finding joy again. Um, but, but, yeah, you need to cut that off. Uh, you know, it's going to hurt you. <laughs> you know, um, and that, that was just a good scene. That was really good directing, absolutely. I agree. Um I just, you know, her trying to reach out and touch uh, everybody out there, and it worked. I mean, but it, you know, I liked, I liked the symmetry shots of Carr giving this speech while you have Lex talking to Brainiac, uh, or not yet, sorry, it's Lena... Crap, why am I blanking? See, we just watched it. That's the problem. He, Lena talking uh, to uh, Andrea. Andrea Rojas. And then there's yes, like... Rojas. Lex, Lex is talking to some... Because there's like three things going on all at once that are like parallels, but they're... They're different. Um, and I like that they, they kind of touch back to the... Andrea, like, you know, Gamma Nay comes out and it's like, I am Leviathan. She's like, what? Now kill Supergirl, or your father won't make it as his company dies. What? And then she touches the shadow and goes to kill Supergirl. Um, <clears throat> am I yeah. Right? Um, it was nice, the uh, the speech that Lena gave to her at the time um, really tied back to that uh, episode uh, of those two. Which, I really can't wait to watch this. Just like I told you about Flash. I really can't wait till this hits Netflix so I can just watch it again straight. Um, yeah. Because I thought there's so many great beats that they've brought back up that were like this one right here. We were kind of like, oh, yeah, I kind of kind of forgot about that. Right. Well, it almost we discussed last week, like it seemed like they had forgot about Andrea being a Krata, you know, <laughs> like. All she was was the CEO of Obsidian. Like they, they gave us that hint post crisis that she had the shadow powers still or got them again, and um, but that was it. And she just seemed oblivious too. I mean, when the like Lex and Gemma are about to launch the thing, and Andrea's staying there, she just like, oh, look at us. <laughs> right. She's like, I'm one of the richest people on the planet. Yay. Go me. <laughs> now, okay. So let's back up a quick second. I want to ask you guys something. So we have the opening scene where we have the, the Martians take on the disguise of Kara because uh, Ramakan can track her movements because he's in touch with the Earth. And, and because it's funny hearing John's voice come out of Kara's body. Which was hilarious. Um, yeah. and then oh, all I love their, their, their Harry Potter. And like, this is the beginning of Deathly Hollows. And she's like, where Hedwig dies? <laughs> and then they're like, but Hedwig, Hedwig and Moody die. And they're like, <laughs> you lost your comrades? <laughs> um, I love that McGann was back. But my thing was, John got hurt in the, one of the battles. Do, do we see it? Like, it just felt like it was so quick that all of a sudden it was like, we got this line of dollar, like, John's hurt, and he'll be recovering. Yeah. Well, he got blasted yeah, by that so. fire elemental. Okay. Like, when like, when oh. Dreamer had her um, okay. her first dream about Brainy in, okay. the, in, in Leviathan, um, she was protecting him at the moment, and 
her shield faded, and he got blasted by that fire elemental. Okay, I wasn't sure if that good was call, it James, or there was something call, I had missed because it just happened so quick. And I, I mean, I give it, this it episode, was quick. <laughs> I give this episode some editorial uh, slides just because I know that there's things in this one that were supposed to be in the next one, and other out of all the finales I've seen so far, uh, so that includes Batwoman, Flash. Um, this one's been the best. Arrow. Well, Arrow was planned. They got to film theirs. Same thing with Black Lightning. Yeah. And same thing with Legend right. of the Ends. But out of the ones that have suffered because of the shutdown, this one was the strongest. I mean, it was only one episode, you know, that got compromised compared to Flash, who lost, like, three. So Right. Um, yeah, Flash went from, like, 22 to 19. Yep. And... Uh, I think Batwoman was supposed to be a full 22. I, didn't it get expanded to full a full season? I don't know for sure. I thought so, but I, yeah, I don't it did. know. It did. And I don't know where they were in their production when they shut down either. Um, right. One, so, I like them all looking like Kara. I like that fight. Um, I really like when Brainy... <laughs> I like John's comment, though, about how he can... How he already, like, what did he say? He's going to feel constricted in those pants or something? Yes. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he, said, oh, he said, oh, man, I know they're going to chafe. Oh. oh, yeah, I know those pants are going to chafe. And I am loving the new Martian Manhunter costume. Yeah, and, and that's fantastic. Too. I'm just like, is there a nice? I'm just like, yes. Like, so is- much better than that vest he was wearing. Oh, for, like, the couple episodes where, yeah, he just had, like, his tactical pants and then like a the vest. Yeah, a vest with some green and red on it, and that was it. Um, we'll get to Brady here in a second because I want to hold off on him and just talk about him. But we have William who just went after Eve, and then we find out he got captured. So I feel like there was more in his story that just got cut out, and then he ends up getting shot. And one of my favorite scenes in this episode is. Where Supergirl shows up after he's shot in the shoulder and is like, I gotta cauterize it. And he's like, she's like, it's gonna hurt. He's like, okay. And then she starts and like, don't do it, don't do it. Like, and she's like, I'm already done. It's already done. Uh, yeah. I thought that was kind it's of It's gonna funny. hurt. It's okay. Do it. Ah, don't, don't what do it. What a wuss. <laughs> and it just. What a wuss. I think that's more believable than like any of the other stuff that we see. Um, I do feel that there's still stuff going on with Eve because she was so like got talked down, got talked back, you know, and then, you know, we'll save your mom. And Kara went and got her and um, Kara has no idea that Eve killed Jeremiah. Like they're all kind of like forgive Eve because Lena's like the one like Eve Tessmacher's still alive. She's here like this is bad. So I still feel like. Eve might have some sort of angle, if not just for self-preservation, against them when they find out that she's the one that killed Jeremiah, because Eve kind of still has a thing against Lex for how he used her. Yeah, and yeah, I, she's definitely still hiding that for sure. Just, and I just kind of felt awkward, like because you know Lex made sure he pointed out, "Oh, you didn't kill the man who killed your father. No, you killed uh, Supergirl's father." Yeah. Um, so I'm like, okay, like I feel like there wasn't even like a hesitation in Eve, like, oh my gosh, like she's gonna figure it out, she's gonna know. Um But yeah, I'm and then that kind of brings us to the brainy storyline. I liked it. Um I like that he brought out the other female brainy. Um Jania goes Man, they found someone who looks a lot like him. And I'm like, that's his sister. Yeah. She, she's like, wait, you mean in real life? I'm like, yeah, in real life, that's his sister. She's like, oh, yeah. okay, that makes sense. And I'm like, yeah. Like, really? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, it, it works. What's What's funny is oh. I know her first before I know him because she was the ghost on Being Human. And what then when funny? I found out they were brother and sister, I was like, oh my god, like. Like, absolutely. <laughs> Being human that has uh, my favorite Jimmy Olsen. 
and has Jimmy Olsen and Sam Witwer. Sam Witwer. <laughs> Sam Witwer so underused. Oh, he's such a good actor. He would have made a dang good Batman too. I liked him as the um the game master on uh the the DC All Stars role playing game they had. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I liked him as Doomsday. Uh, but me too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we Brainy decides that he is going to bottle Leviathan, and in doing so, we found out that Lex has a, like a pass special thing to get onto their ship because right there tells you they're aliening their ship. Um. Because of the security, but and Brainiac knows if he does it, it could kill him without the special pass. But he decides to do it anyways to bottle Leviathan, and which is crazy that it only bottle, bottled the elementals. It didn't bottle Gemma, and what, I was we wondering. still don't know who they were reporting to. Was it because she, like I wondered that too? Because like when he did it, like she fried. And were they too far away, like, or was she too far away, or something? And that makes me wonder about some other things, like from. A I mean, they, they basically like, right? Well, you know, they basically. I think. Like, well, I think it or or was was sucked back. So yeah, I don't know. I think that I think it's because she wasn't really an elemental; like, she was the goddess of technology. And the and the other ones, you, you had one that was wind, one that was fire, one was earth. She wasn't really like an element; like she wasn't water or anything. Yeah, they uh, called her a technocrat. Yeah. See, that's why I was like, "What are Leviathan?" Then, if you know, if like she's supposed to be bottling them, he's utilizing their ship, and he only got the three, but. It was, yeah, it was cool. I, I think that was kind of a rushed part. Um, mm-hmm. there, there's a guarantee there's there's more that would have been in another episode that gave us more explanation, but is now on the other side of that to be continued. Yeah, and that's that's like how she how she came back and she was that full on Terminatrix. That was um, pretty crazy. But, you know, Lex takes the, the bottle that Brainiac's laying there dying, and, you know, Lex is, like, basically says, uh, you know, I, I figured you'd, you would turn and you'd bottle them. I, I counted for that, but I didn't figure you'd kill yourself doing it. So, here, I'm going to take this, and you can still lay here and die like you wanted. Right, and then goes to Lillian Luther with the with the bottled elementals and um, Dreamer through through her emotional arc with Brainy, she wanted to ignore him in her dreams, and then she kind of wakes up and realizes that he's in danger. So, I mean, uh, what did you guys think overall of this as a finale? Um, considering, considering, you know, the virus and what's going on and stuff, um, I think they did really good. I mean, they, they gave us one and more, like we want to know what's going to happen with those elementals. We want to know who the heck they report to. Um, we want to know what Lex is going to do next. Um, you know, I know I do. Um, you know, now we have Lena and, and a Supergirl on the same page, finally. Um, and to be able to work together, to be able to take down Lex. Um, I, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good, man. I, I mean, I, I greatly enjoyed it. But, um, I didn't see the Flash's finale or Batwoman's yet. At, um, to be able to grade which one was the best, um, but <laughs> I like I like Supergirl better than the Flash. 
Yeah, I I I do predict the Flash is probably gonna piss me off, um, but 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 uh, we'll get there, you know. But I liked it; I really did. I I agree. Like it worked, you know, given some slack because of the whole situation. But my thing is just, man, the fact that we have to wait so long to continue and like we have no really idea what the next season's going to bring. That is one thing that the Flash, I think, has up on Supergirl. Is with the Flash, we have an idea of one thread that's going to carry over, or two that's going to carry over for sure. With Supergirl right now, like, I feel like what, with Lex and Terminatrix there, uh, I think that'll get resolved within the first or t- second episode of next season. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I, I liked it. I just hate that we have to wait so long. It'll give me time to review and... See. Right. It was it was a strong episode. Um, definitely. Uh, I, think, I think they did a good job editing and, and probably using what they have, what footage they have. Um, I mean, they know they're coming back, um, and they weren't able to film and resolve it. So I think, you know, same thing with the flash, like they give it that to be continued. Um, you know, it's, it's, we're going to see what comes of it come next season, which, you know, it's like not really used to that anymore. Like they used to do that with TV before. Now it's not, that's not the way of it. (laughs) Um, but, uh, it it was a good episode. John Cryer's Lex is, is amazing. Um, uh, I thought, um, Jesse Raff did a good job, uh, this episode. Oh Um, yeah. This is probably his best, his best work on the series. Yeah, definitely. Um, I still think they're shortchanging Brainy, um, being a 12th level intellect. Um, but uh, hopefully next season, because I have a feeling that he's going to be rescued. Um, they've got a, you know, a, a dreamer there to help them recover him before he dies. Um so I have a feeling he's he's gonna be he's gonna be returning, and that he'll come clean with his friends, and all will be good eventually. And maybe they'll maybe they'll do a little better with him when he's not trying to hide things and he's not so easily manipulated. It would be it would be nice. It would be work because you know there's. You know, there's no DEO building, and I'm glad of that. Like, let's let's see some things change. Like, you know, we need to shake it up a little, and just we've moved our right. character, we've moved our characters on from where they started. Um, yeah, get the get rid of the government agency. Let's let's get these people doing what they do, <laughs> what they can do, without those restrictions. That's that's pretty much Alex's. Let's Alex. let's build the dang watchtower. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's we'll kind of what John something. John's office, where he's got all the stuff. Like, that's another thing. Yeah, that's makes, right. Talk tower. About, they, the tower. <laughs> they made a big deal. They're all on the same earth, and I'm not going to go into it right now. But like the whole part of what the whole finale of Batwoman that's extremely stupid is they have to find something. I won't say <laughs> what. But it just, when you watch it, you're just like, this is stupid if they're all on the same earth. And and then you think about what's going on in the other shows. You're like, yeah, this is dumb. But anyways, they made a big deal out of this forming of what would become the Justice uh, League. And they've League. done nothing with it. Like, they've just... Uh, They've they haven't had any kind of crossover, nothing, and I almost wish that Crisis would have been the event that kind of 
ended all these shows, but it doesn't really work for Flash and Supergirl. They're the ones that really kind of were affected the most from Crisis. But I don't know. I just I don't need them to pop up on each other's shows all the time. But like just some phone call, a text message, some dialogue, you know, about hey, I have this Continuity. issue. Continuity. You know, I have an issue. Can you help Continuity. me? Continuity. <laughs> um. Well, Brian, you you, as me and Tyler discussed on on um the missing link, like I think that trying to go big again with a crossover. I mean, I don't think there's, they're planning on that. Um, I, I said that next, next year's crossover should be like, instead of like crossover event, like crisis where everybody comes together, I think it should just be like crisis week where they've got like Supergirl and Batwoman, um, teaming up and Supergirl's on the Batwoman show and Batwoman's on the Supergirl show. And then you've got a team up between like flash and black lightning where flash is on black lightning, black lightning's on flash where that, that way each person, each, each storyline gets a two episode arc. And, um, you know, you're not beholden to this humongous crossover, um, it's a lot smaller and personal, personal, but you still have all the shows performing some sort of crossover. Yeah, like the first crossover yeah, okay. when it was just Flash and Arrow, okay. you know. Okay, yeah, that was. I mean, yeah, that would be wise. I mean, it would help them build something bigger in the future. Um, yeah, I'd be, I mean, I'd be for that. Um, I mean, I, I do want to see some growth. I do want to see some good writing. <laughs> um, um, but I, but my only worry with that is we need, we definitely need to build something with this Justice League and this whole Justice thing, like to to introduce something so big and just have it sit there for like two or three years. Uh, that kind of sucks. <laughs> so, um, if, if in that you know somewhat crossover. Um, we need to establish something with that. You know and I mean, I, I, but you know, they probably should take a break for that. Let us build up that Superman show. Um, you know, let us know as fans kind of really what that's going to be about. Um, I don't know. I'm hopeful. I told you. World War. Mongol. Mongol. What's that? What's What'd you say? War, war world. world. Mongol. Mongol and war world. Um, if they did a full, if they did a full crossover, not to the, um, you know, cause it wouldn't be as big as crisis, but if they did a war world crossover, they could do everybody together, but it would be more like, gladiator mm -hmm. as opposed to what crisis was how it had to be so big it would be like gladiator where it would be like these all the characters are like enslaved they're entrapped and they're all fighting for their lives it would yep. be more action oriented less you know universe yeah Oh, destroying yeah. and rebuilding, yeah. you know. Yeah, I just think it would be a lot smaller, but it would still be, you know, a a big thing that everybody could be involved in. I think it'd be. I think it'd just be awesome if you know, Mongol just shows up and he's like, wants them to battle, or or like each one of their episodes before it ends, and it's Mongol like picking them off bring them all to his planet and you do like a two or three episode of them kind of on the world. But anything else we right. want to say kinda, about this? Kind of like the, kind of right. like the end of the Supergirl episode before invasion where they just like get Supergirl yes. and bring her over. Yes. But instead it'll be like at the end of every episode, it'll be like them getting abducted. Yes. <laughs> So anything we want to add to this is our last time to talk about Supergirl for a while, as far as a show, an episode, like right. Um, Girl, I'm gonna miss you. 
I, <laughs> I, um, I still just kind of am like, so we got two, two other elementals that we haven't seen or heard from all season. Um, but okay. So I was like, that's kind of, that, that's one of those things where you're just like, okay, you just like th- just created some random characters and threw them in. They're like Trevor. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, Tyler. I know what you mean. <laughs> so yeah but that, that's about it um it was good i liked it um it was a good it was a good finale and it's gonna be crazy to wait this long because it's gonna be a lot longer than a summer break before we get to see what happens yeah but all right i think that's where we're gonna put our pen in it brian thanks for being here thank you for having me you're welcome James, good talking to you again. <laughs> yeah, it's been a been a busy weekend. <laughs> so, all right, fellas, <laughs> take care. And remember. Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. Look in the sky.